good morning, everybody. My name is Jesse, and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. If you're joining us for the first time, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. And I just want to say a special shout out to all our teachers. Welcome back to the classroom. It is so thrilling to see kids in the class excited to learn with us. Last year, we did 550 programs, plus all virtual. Uh, so thank you guys for continuing to tune in. Today, especially, we have a whole bunch of our all-star teachers that joined us for just so many exciting experiences last year. So it's so nice to see you personally back in the classroom and back with us at Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. Now, before we dive in with today's presentation, I do want to note in advance that we are doing something a little bit different to start this year. We started using the Kahoot platform. So if you are tuning in on YouTube, a, let me know where you're joining from, and B, feel free to open that up in another tab. We're gonna do a little quiz after the talk before we dive in with the Q&A. But I'm so excited to dive in. I wanna turn that off and, and bring in our speaker. We are joined live by Colin Stevenson. So he is the head of education at Crocodiles of the World. We've got a lot of Ontario classes today, so you guys might be familiar with Reptilia Zoo, which is an amazing place. I had birthday parties at when I was a kid. Crocodiles of the World is like that on steroids. They do amazing stuff to educate the public about crocodilians, all sorts of amazing creatures uh, in the UK. It's the second time joining us for Colin, and I'm so thrilled to have him back to dive into the world of one of the coolest kinds of creatures on this planet. So. Without further ado, Colin, thank you so much for joining us today, man. No worries. Happy to uh, happy to be here. Awesome. And take us away. We'd love to take a little tour with you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, hello, everyone. Um, you'll have to first of all excuse me. I, I don't know how to switch my uh, camera around. So when I'm trying to show you some of the some of the animals, uh, I may not quite have them lined up perfectly. But we'll see how we go. So hello, I am Colin. Uh, crocodiles of the world is the only crocodile zoo in the UK, so it's a bit a bit strange. It's a strange place to have a crocodile zoo in uh, in the UK because, as an Australian and certainly as far as the crocodilians go, most of the time outside in England it's too cold. It's too cold for us. Um, so the first thing, as you might start to see me sweating, it's warm in this building, um, and a lot of you guys watching hopefully will pick up pretty quickly, okay, it has to be warm because crocodiles are cold-blooded animals, uh, and that's the fact. Um, they're cold-blooded animals like the other reptiles. It doesn't mean they're cold. It quite the opposite means they need to be kept warm. They live in the warm parts of the planet, so therefore we have to heat these buildings up. And the building I'm standing in at the moment is around about 29, 30 degrees right now. Outside, it's probably about 15 or 16 degrees. And that's a, that's a warm day here in England. Uh, it's a bit of a worry, isn't it? Um, so we have to heat these uh, heat these animals up, keep them nice and warm. Um, and why did we why did we set up a crocodile zoo in the UK? Uh, we love crocodiles. Crocodiles are misunderstood. Uh, a lot of the things that you've seen on TV, uh, certainly the things that you see in the movies, is just plain wrong or um, slightly misdirected. Um, and what I want to do today is tell you the truth about crocodiles, show you some amazing animals, um, teach you the difference between crocodiles and alligators, and then head it over to you guys to uh, fire some questions at me. We are open to the public right now, so if you uh, hear any other voices, that's, uh, that's why there's just some other visitors walking around uh, at the moment. So right now I'm standing in front of, let me see if I can get them nice and close for you some little dwarf caimans. Uh, dwarf caimans, they, in fact, these uh, there's three animals here, only two are remotely visible at the moment. These dwarf caimans, a lot of the time, uh, they don't move a whole heap, and people just look at these and just assume, oh, these ones must not be real, they're just, ju they're just fakes. Um, the truth is, of course, they are very much real. Uh, it's a breeding trio in here, two girlies and one very happy male in this enclosure. And not only that, the important thing for people to realise in this enclosure is that these are all adult animals, fully grown. They're not going to get bigger. There's the other female over there. Hopefully you can see that and there's not too much reflection off the glass. She's over there near her nest. Um, so... The point with this is that dwarf caimans are the smallest of all of the species of crocodilians today. The male, he's about mm, just under five foot long. The females are just under four foot long. And they're fully grown. They're not going to get any bigger than that. 
Um, so you've been told on TV that all these, or given the impression that all these crocodiles get to huge sizes and they're all potentially man-eaters. Uh, oh, guess what, children? They're lying to you on those TV shows. <coughs> There's actually a whole bunch of species that simply don't get big enough to be any serious threat to, uh, to us. There's 26 species recognised at the moment. That is kind of changing because the scientists are uh, starting to use uh, molecular data or DNA to have a look at, at whether a species that's found over a big area is actually one species or whether it may actually be a, a couple of species um, and we just haven't recognised that previously. So that's uh, subject to change but 26 species and these dwarf caimans are the smallest of the, uh, of the living species. Um, beautiful little things and if you're thinking, hang on, I've heard of caimans, uh, sorry, I've heard of alligators, I've heard of crocodiles. He's just said dwarf caiman. What's a, what's a caiman? Caiman is an alligator from South America. That's the uh, easiest way to think of them. And there's actually a number of caiman species. And then there's not just one caiman species. And I'm just wandering over here. Sorry for all these shots up my nose. What I'm going to do is show you a very big crocodile skull. There it is, just behind my head there. I'm going to put my hand on there so you can just sort of see a bit of comparison there that's a big skull this is for a replica skull so it itself is not real but it is directly cast from a crocodile skull so the crocodile that this was cast from it was in fact this big uh insane it's about a 5.2 meter saltwater crocodile that this skull would have been from and um, it just goes to show you how big these things can get let's go down to the business end open up those jaws if I can without breaking my wrist I might have to brace myself a little bit and there we go sorry it's really hard to hold that camera when people ask ask me what do you do if a big crocodile comes to get you and when you look at that jaw well I don't know you tell me what you're going to do if a big crocodile like that comes to get you <laughs> not much you do whatever you can um this uh this skull here is also showing us how we can t easily tell a crocodile from an alligator and the way we can whoops trying to jug get my camera working properly the way we can tell is simply by looking at these little bits just here this top jaw here, you notice there's this little groove here. There's another little groove up here as well. Look, let me just yeah, groove up there. So with this one here, some of these lower teeth will fit into some sockets, okay? So when the mouth is closed, you're going to see some really prominent teeth pointing upwards. That tells us straight away it's a crocodile. Must be, because if it was an alligator or a caiman, it wouldn't have these little grooves and notches here. This would be just nice and straight and the top jaw would completely and totally overlap the lower jaw and we would just see teeth pointing down. That's how we can easily tell an alligator from a crocodile. With an alligator, the teeth just point down. When the mouth is closed with a crocodile, you'll see very prominent teeth pointing up as well as teeth pointing down. So zigzag toothy grin is a crocodile and a buck tooth overbite is an alligator. Other things that we can notice with this skull is, again, just trying to get the, make sure the camera is in uh, the right direction. We have uh, the ears, location of the ears just here, eyes just here, and then we go along to the nose just here. In other words, the eyes, ears and nose are all on the top of the head. All right, nose, eyes, ears, all on the top of the head. So crocodiles can hide in the water, sit in murky river water. You can't see them, but they themselves can see, hear, smell, and breathe. That's really important. That allows them to be perfect stealth predators. Um, right down the front here, we can see some what look like nostrils, but they're not. They're called false nostrils. In the live animal, that's where some teeth, teeth would have projected and slowly worn through the bone over the uh, over the years. That's where the nose uh, actually is. 
Okay, spin my little camera around and we'll move on. So that's one of the easiest ways to tell crocodiles from alligators is just by looking at the arrangement of the teeth when the mouth is closed, teeth pointing up and down, crocodile, teeth pointing just down, alligator or caiman. Okay, here we are at another enclosure. And these ones here are dwarf, dwarf crocodiles. So again, dwarfs mean small. Now these ones are crocodiles. These are, are the smallest of the crocodile species. Okay, so another thing that people ask us all the time is which one's bigger, crocodiles or alligators? That's, a, that's not a sensible question. It doesn't make any sense to us because there's big crocodiles and little crocodiles, big alligators and little alligators. Um, these ones happen to be the smallest of all of the actual crocodiles um, and they're smaller than some of the alligators uh, but bigger than others of the alligators. So um, these guys come from West Africa and over there in the distance you can see on the land a big pile and that uh, that is the nest that the female has built. And she's done that herself. We didn't do it. She scrapes together all of the, that substrate uh, into a big pile. Um, for most species, when they do this uh, this type of nest, it's around about the size of a, of a pitcher's mound, I suppose. Um, so about two feet high and about a meter across there about. So um, it's quite, quite a substantial job for a, a female crocodile or alligator. They've only got uh, very slow use of their, of their legs, both rear and front legs, and it takes them a long time, a couple of days usually, to fully uh, uh, complete their nest and then add the finishing touches by tramping uh, on it. It's quite cute to watch, but it's at the same time a little bit painful at how long it takes. Um, we mentioned before that a lot of people, when they're looking at our animals, they don't move very much. And you'll probably notice that when you go to a zoo, you see the crocodile or the alligator and it's just sitting there and you think, oh, they're a bit boring. Um, sometimes people think they're lazy. That's actually a very dangerous thought. These things are not lazy. These things are fully aware of what's going on around them at all times and they are ready to rock and roll whenever the need uh, arises. So for, the, for these crocodiles here, if I made a sudden move that would indicate either a threat to them or that it may be dinner time, these crocodiles would pounce very, very quickly in my direction. Um, and when a crocodile moves quickly, it it puts a bit of a, a surprise or a bit of a shock into you. It's extremely fast, extremely um, powerful. So very powerful movements, very um, explosive movements uh, when they want to for these, for these animals. Now, you've got to remember that crocodiles and alligators, as I say, ambush predators. This one here, hopefully you can see uh, the male there in the water. Now, the water is clear, so we can see her, his body, but but if the water was murky, all that we would be able to see uh, is just part of that head, the eyes, ears and nose sticking out of the water. Remember, they're a stealth predator. So by keeping still and just only allowing just the part of their head to protrude from the surface of the water. It's just the perfect stealth mode uh, for these large predators. Um, crocodiles and alligators, their job is to not be seen and they're very, very good at it. So that's the other reason why they uh, are so good at staying still. Um, the other thing we like to remind children especially is, now you've probably had uh, lunch, I don't know, it's probably a bit early for lunch actually over where you, most of you guys are, but over here people have had their breakfast, they've had a, a snack, they've had their lunch, they're probably starting to get very hungry, ready to get home from school and raid the fridge and the cupboard like everyone does and then have dinner. Um, in other words, we're eating several times a day, that gives us uh, a lot of energy to be moving around, to be active, but crocodiles, all of our adult crocodiles and these are adult crocodiles, we only feed them once a week. That's it. Because they're cold-blooded, they do not need the same amount of food that we need. Um, so we feed them once a week. Now, if you were just getting fed once a week, you probably wouldn't have a lot of surplus energy to be running around. Uh, and, that, and that's the way it is with the crocodiles. They don't have a whole bunch of excess energy to be running around. They would rather conserve that energy 
uh, until they need it, and whether that is um, in escaping from a threat or uh, trying to uh, secure a meal. Um, so that's what they that's what they do when they're standing nice and still or sitting there nice and still. They're just conserving that energy for a time that they may need it. If they were act as active as we are all the time, they would eventually die. It's just not the way they work. They don't work the same way that we do. They are beautiful. Um, teenagers can try that at home and just say, I'm, I'm not lazy, mum. I'm energy efficient, but it doesn't work for teenagers. Um, it only works for crocodiles and alligators. My kids always try that. Oh, Colin, you're cutting in a little. We're in a dead zone <laughs> for a second. We'll wait till you get back to the next enclosure. But uh, yeah, let's continue on and see what else we can see in Crocodiles of the World. We're about five minutes away from diving with questions with you guys after that brief quiz. And what I can do while Colin's getting his connection back on is highlight our game pin for today. So if you are on Kahoot.it, which I'll bring up again first, if you're on Kahoot.it, check out the game pin 2822905, and you can get ready for our game to begin once Colin is back with us uh, and ready to go. But yes, again, if you guys ever get the chance to see crocodilians in the wild, uh, it's an amazing experience. I've had the chance to personally do it. Very, very cool stuff. Uh, and of course, zoos and aquaria. All Increasingly, you see crocodilians at places around Canada and around the US, uh, and so I really hope you guys all get that shot. Colin, let's do it back now. I'm going to bring him back in. Hey, Colin, you just went through a little dead area for a minute there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, technology's a beautiful thing. I think uh, I just stepped outside of our Wi-Fi zone, so I've stepped back in now, which is a bit of a lovely enclosure I was just wandering around. <laughs> okay, what we'll do is I'll, uh, I'll head somewhere else and try and show you what I meant with... Uh, the difference between the crocodiles and the alligators teeth. So here we go. Spin Mr. Camera around. Now hopefully we can see that guy's jaws. This is Captain Cayman. Yeah. And Captain we Cayman got, is called Colin. a spectacled Cayman. Oh, um, we got it. Oh, go down just a little bit. A little tiny bit with the camera and then we'll see his jaw a little better. You just had it a little too high. You want to see his jaw. He had his eye in the frame. Yeah. Okay. There we go. How's that? That's good. You can back up a little bit too with it. And we can get the whole scale of them. There we go. Perfect. That okay? That's Excellent. beautiful. Beautiful. No worries. So this is Captain Cayman. And with his, uh, with his mouth closed, that top jaw completely overlaps the lower jaw. And we can only see teeth pointing down. That's classic alligator uh, jaw for you there. So with those crocodiles, remember, you'll see some very prominent teeth pointing upwards. Alligators and caimans, you would just see those top teeth pointing down. Now, hopefully, I don't know whether you can, but you may be able to see some little dots on Captain Cayman's jaw. Yeah, let's go down a little bit again. Hard oh, for me to... Down, to... down a little bit. <laughs> Hard there, me. there we go. Okay, so hopefully we can see some uh, little tiny dots Lining crocodile and alligator jaws are thousands of tiny little dots. They're little sense organs. So if it was pitch black right now and I dropped something into the water beside, um, even a few feet away from Captain Cayman's jaws, those little sense organs would register that, um, that little disturbance on the surface of the water and allow him to respond very rapidly to what he would hope was a meal. Um, so... Uh, that, that sort of is something that we keep in mind to the to the side is actually the danger zone with crocodiles, not in front. Um, so we're very, very wary of approaching a crocodile from the side. They can swing around lightning fast um, and we wouldn't actually register the movement until it was uh, possibly a little bit too late. So uh, these guys, oh, hello, he's, he's spinning around saying hello to me. He knows me very well. He's a lovely little chap. Um, and uh, yeah, so those sense organs are um, really, really important. Each one of those dots, and as I say, there's thousands of them lining those jaws. Uh, each one of those dots, and down he goes. He's disappeared on us. Each one of those dots is um, 
around about 10 times more sensitive than your. Oh, <laughs> you hit mute, Colin. <laughs> oh, the joys of broadcasting with a camera that won't flip around. Uh, so, Colin, you're muted. Let's unmute your mic. You will need to do that on your end. So flip that camera around and just press the mute button on the bottom. There we go. <laughs> nope, you're back muted again. Yeah. There we go. There we go. <laughs> technology, technology is a beautiful thing. Um, what I was hoping when uh, Captain Kamen was just underwater then is when he goes underwater, he's got swimming goggles. Crocodiles and alligators do have a built-in pair of swimming goggles. When they submerge, those goggles are flipped into place. It's a third eyelid. It's transparent, so they can see through it. It protects their eyes while they're underwater. So uh, Captain Cayman was uh, showing that. Uh, there he goes. He's closed his eyes completely. You can see a little bit of those just in place. Good boy. Um, so, yes, uh, three eyelids for, for crocodiles. That third one is his swimming goggles. Uh, those little sense organs um, that, that highlight any disturbance at the surface of the water tells us a lot. It tells us that crocodiles, as ambush predators, they are water's edge, water's surface predators. All right, very important. Water's edge, water's surface predators. So the position of their sensors on the top of their head, all these uh, organs lined up around the sides of the jaw, uh, the swimming goggles, uh, everything's all pointing back to that uh, to that whole aspect of water's edge, water's surface predator, uh, ambush predator. Their job is to not be seen. Let's conserve our energy um, and let's stay nice and still unless we need to move. All right, so that's how crocodiles work. He's beautiful. He is beautiful. That's beautiful. Colin, if that works, what I can do now is we can dive in with questions after that brief little quiz. Uh, and then we'll get the chance to talk about a lot more. And of course, if there's anything else you wanted to show us in Crocodiles of the World, you can walk to that while we're taking those questions and we can highlight it that way. Does that work for you? Sure. No Next. worries. Well, I'll let you start walking for a second. I'll bring myself back for just a minute. Again, we are going to play that Kahoot quiz. I'm going to pull it up for a minute. We already have 50 members joining us, which is fantastic. If you are new to this, uh, you can check out our game pin. We're going to do this for about a minute and a half and then dive in with questions. If you have questions on YouTube, get them ready. If you're in your class live, all the better. We'd love to have your questions uh, on camera in just a minute. But let me pull up that Chrome tab and we will get underway with that quiz. All right, we're up on our screen now. We're good to go, and I am going to start us off with our questions. All right. Crocs today, needless to say. All right. Maybe we'll get Colin's help if we have any queries on things. True or false, to begin. Some crocodiles can be over 20 feet long. We held a lot of little tiny ones today, some dwarf caimans, some dwarf crocodiles. We'll see what people think about some really big guys now. You only had 10 seconds. It was fast. I know. It was fast, fast, fast. Let's see, 25 of you say yes, which is correct. The rest of you false. The faster you go in Kahoot, the more your point. So you can get a, a leaderboard as we go along here, knowing yet he got it within a like, quarter second way to go to kick us off. And question number two, multi-select. So you're going to pick as many as are applicable. So pick all the ones that the answer is yes for in this one. Where do crocodilians live? Crocodiles, caimans, gharials, alligators, all of them. Where can we find them? Not Antarctica, it's not there. But how about these guys? All of them? Some of them? Which ones and which not others? We got three more seconds. And night. Ooh, split evenly. So it is all four. So anyone who put in all four, fantastic. You can find crocodiles on all of those continents. Very good, guys. Nice job. All right. True or false? Third question. Crocodiles were around during the time of the dinosaurs. I don't know, we got a very angry T Rex here. T Rexes are always angry right near the end. When the meteorites coming in, they're just really unhappy consistently. 51 answers, almost never answered this, like immediately. Way to go, like a whole group. Holy, there's 91 of you. When did that happen? That's exciting. Three more seconds, guys. Time of the dinosaurs. True or false? True, most of you got that correct, which is great. In fact, I was talking with a dinosaur man the other day talking about the fact that. T-Rexes have been found missing tails that were taken off by giant crocodiles during that era. Sarcosuchus and Dinosuchus, the two most metal crocodilians of all time. And finally, our final question, true or false? Crocodiles are awesome. What do you think? We only have a few seconds for this one. There's only one right answer. 
I don't know. It's a toughie. It's a real, it's a, it's, a, it's challenging. <laughs> One more second. Three people said, no, oh man, you guys are in the wrong session. Well, let's see who got our, our podium today. And then we will dive in with that question and answer period. So if you guys have questions, get them ready. Think of them now. I'm coming to Miss Forsyth in Bracebridge in a minute. All right, number one with 6,000 points, we've got Mighty Alpaca. Way to go. Kept the lead most of the game. Nicely done. All right, I'm going to take that game pin off. I'm going to bring back in Colin. And what we're going to do is go to Miss Forsyth to kick us off with a question. So, Miss Forsyth, come on in with your great nine. Hi, guys. Hey, St. Colin. Hi, can you hear us? Yeah, you're good to go. Um, we want to know what, what some of the conservation issues are with crocodiles. Yeah, great question. Yeah, it is a good question. It's one of the uh, one of the main uh, reasons for us being here, really. Um, there's a whole bunch of uh, different concerns with, with most of the crocodilians that are still endangered, and there's probably seven species that are uh, in some sort of danger or other. Uh, it's, it's usually habitat loss. Um, so it's not hunting for skins or anything. That was an issue, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago, but not so much now. Uh, so it's, it's predominantly habitat loss. Uh, near, nearer to you guys uh, in the United States there, um, the Cuban crocodile is um, uh, not doing too well. It's only in, found in one swamp in Cuba, and it, it's, it's subject to a few, uh, few, few ongoing issues uh, there, so there's a lot of work going on for that species. Um, there's an alligator that comes from China. Um, as you know, China's got a lot of people. There's not much space left for wildlife. So again, it's another species that really doesn't have a home. It's as simple as that. So, but again, there's a lot of work being done to reclaim areas for Chinese alligators. And um, so, really, around the world, when you're hearing about uh, deforestation and you're thinking well crocodiles don't live in trees that's not going to affect them yeah but they do eat animals that uh, live in trees and they do require uh, habitat including fringing vegetation on the on the on the water plus when they're doing these deforestation that causes a lot of siltation a lot of runoff into uh, rivers a lot of disturbance uh, so it's not just the animals that live in the trees that get affected it's the the entire ecosystem gets uh, degraded. Um, there's a lot of mining going on in Central America, illegal and otherwise gold mining that releases some toxic chemicals into the waterways. So even our little dwarf caimans that we saw at the start are subject to uh, uh, sort of localized problems because of because of that. And with the deforestation, of course, it can cause um, um, they need to access the forest, so they chop roads uh, through. Uh, existing forest and that uh, that can, can separate uh, or isolate populations of different animals uh, dwarf caimans and other species of crocodiles get hit by cars uh, more and more and more these days so there's there's a few uh, concerns for crocodile conservation but some like the American alligator the, uh, the saltwater crocodile in Australia are, are doing really well as examples for where conservation can work brilliantly uh, and it has done. I'm so glad you mentioned the American alligator. I was going to highlight that in this broadcast. So this is an animal that was on the endangered species list. They were like, there was, you know, very few left. And what was done was a huge investment into building up that habitat, making the Everglades as a, a region stay for them. And now there's so many alligators that have them in the menus. I mean, you can literally eat an alligator in Florida because there are so many American alligators, which is an amazing conservation story. It highlights something that we do in so many of our broadcasts. You give animals room to live. They will thrive, and that is a universal. Absolutely, all make a difference on. So, great question, guys. Um, Miss Coffin's class, grade three, four, is in Gory, Ontario. Come on in. Hey. Hi, how are you? Hi, Colin. Um, Hi. We would like to know how the crocodilians come to be with you. Um, we we are a, a, a zoo, so most of the animals, are the younger ones, we either bred here or um, have well, even the out other animals uh, we uh, secured from other zoos. So that's generally how the zoo world uh, works. The idea is to never grab animals from the wild. For most of these species, there's no need to go for us to grab any crocodiles from the wild. If anything, you want to be returning them uh, to the wild once the threats to any of these species has been 
uh, at least mitigated, if not removed completely. So, yeah, zoo transfers is uh, generally how we uh, get our animals. Initially, we did take in a few rescues. Uh, people are silly enough to have these things as pets. Um, we don't, we don't uh, um, recommend that, but um, we have done that in the past, but we, we don't have the space. As far as breeding the animals, um, we will only breed uh, or successfully incubate uh, crocodile eggs if, if we have an outlet for those babies. Um, it's not as simple as breeding an animal and then just putting it back into the wild. If the threats are still existing in the wild, it's pointless throwing more animals into that situation. So you have to be responsible with how you manage that captive population. And uh, so we, we cooperate with other, uh, other zoos within Europe um, where the breeding and the management of the populations of all of these species uh, is, is it's actually managed very carefully, managed by some very clever, very clever people. Um, and so we, we take part in those, uh, those management programs for uh, as many crocodile species as we can. Anytime we have live animals, we get that question like, where do they come from? How are they cared for? One thing that I really want to highlight for all our classes is something called AZA, or in Canada, it's, there's a C in front, and Britain, it's a Viaza. So these are certifications, these are accreditations that highlight that the uh, facility is at the highest standard of animal care. So that uh, animals are well cared for, there's a, you know, a plan in place to make sure they live long and healthy, healthy lives. So wherever you go on this planet, if you're going to a zoo or aquarium, if you're going somewhere where there are live animals, Check for these accreditations. It really means that you're going to the best possible places, like crocodiles in the world. So uh, do that whenever you're going on vacation. Or more. Awesome, Absolutely. guys. Mr. Stelman's class, so they're joining us in Burlington, right over the Skyway from me here in St. Catharines. Grade fours, come on up, guys. Um, why, why do um, crocodiles carry the babies in the mouth? I missed that, sorry. Why yeah. do crocodiles carry their babies in their mouths? Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, when when uh, the babies are ready to hatch out, they make very, very uh, cute chirping noises like little birdies. And not always, but often the male or the female will uh, open, the, open the nest and carry some of those babies to the water in their mouth. The only way they possibly can carry anything is in their mouth. Um, so they will carry the babies to the water from the nest um, and release them into the water. Um, it's just a way for them to ensure that the babies are at least protected. It's extremely vulnerable, obviously, coming out of a, an egg. Baby crocodiles are tiny and everything in the uh, environment will eat them. So the, the mother does her best to protect those babies, part of which is that just that initial carry from the, the, the nest into the water. After that, they don't carry them in uh, in their mouths ever again. Uh, that's just a one-off, but they will stay with them. Um, she will call to the babies. The babies will call back. Um, the extremely vocal. There's a lot of uh, vocalization and um, very complex uh, sort of, I guess, uh, vocalizations really from uh, from crocodilians of all ages, and. Um, she is just checking on them. If she hears one of them is calling and, and it's a little bit further away, she will move over and shoo it over back to the group. Uh, she can only protect them uh, as best she can, and that's if they're all within a, a, a nearby group. If, if one of them strays, then she needs to move it back, uh, back with the safe, safety in numbers, really. I'm so glad you mentioned the vocalizations. Honestly, when we're done this broadcast, everyone should just go instantly to YouTube and look up crocodile babies and crocodile sounds. It's one of the most unique and amazing things in all of nature. I just absolutely love them. They're such a delight to hear. Uh, awesome. Let's head down the road in Burlington to Mr. Elsa's class. Uh, come on up, guys. Go for it. Hey. Okay, Ryan, go. Um, how big is the largest crocodile or alligator you have in the zoo? Okay, that's a good uh, good question. The biggest uh, crocodile we've got is about 3.7, uh, 3.8 meters. So, you know, it, it, it's uh, it's quite quite big. It doesn't weigh that much, uh, but um, well, when I say it doesn't weigh that much, he weighs about 180 kilos thereabouts. Um, so that's the biggest one that we have at the moment. It is called a Temistema, which is a, a strange name. Uh, 
and it's a species that most people haven't heard of. It's actually one of the largest species of crocodile uh, on, the, on the planet today. Most people haven't heard of it. It comes from Malaysia, Indonesia, that, that part of the world. And we have a number of babies from, uh, from that pair. Um, we also have a very large American alligator called Albert. He's just under 200 kilos, and he must be, yeah, a little bit smaller. So he, he's probably maybe uh, 11 and a half foot long. And, um, and another crocodile that we have of a similar sort of size, not quite as chunky, but yeah, maybe 11 ish foot long. So they're, they're the big ones. We've got some quite good sized crocs. Very cool. Well, that is one of those things that, like, oh, it sounds like, you know, I mentioned the 20 foot croc on the quiz. You're like, that's a big one. 11 feet is a sizable animal. I know for some of our classes, oh, Ontario, big. if you've ever been to the Ripley's Aquarium, the biggest sharks they have are 11 feet. So when they're like going over you and it takes like, it seems like five minutes to cross overhead, that's an 11 foot animal. Um, these are sizable predators. Very, very cool. All right, Miss Russett's class, if you guys want to come up, uh, Miss Russett's joining us on fire with her four or five today. Just unmute that mic. And you're good to go. We'll head to Miss Neely in a second. Hi, guys. Have you, have you ever been bitten by a crocodile? <laughs> yeah, I do get that question a lot, too. Um, yes, if you work with uh, work with any animal, you, you're sooner or later going to make a mistake. So uh, I've made a few mistakes. I'm pretty good at that. Um, so, yeah, I've got a few, few bites uh, that have required stitches, um, but, but I haven't lost any limbs or digits or anything like that. So I've come out pretty, pretty well. Strangely enough, the biggest scar I have is actually from when I had a zoo in Australia and that was from a wombat. So the biggest scar is from a wombat, not a crocodile. But... <laughs> I, I, you know, I want to harp on this for just a second because a lot of people when they think of crocodiles and they think of sharks and bears and, and predatory animals, you know, the, the thought is that they're like they're out to get you in some way. And I mean, you mentioned that these are mistakes in yours. This is something where in the wild, if you give animals respect, if you give them space, um, you're unlikely to ever be in a situation where an animal is going to attack you. Certainly in the wild, in a zoo where you're handling them more often, it might be a little more likely. But I, I think that's an important message to share with all our kids today. And it's also important that every uh, scar I've got, uh, I should have tattooed next to it, idiot. Yeah. Uh, it's always been a time, every single time, it's where you have made the mistake. Do not blame the animal. Um, completely on me, every single one of those. Um, you get a bit blasé and working with crocodiles, it's actually the smaller ones more likely. You're going to get, you're going to tune off because it's easy. Uh, the bigger, bigger the crocodile, yeah, you're not tuning off. You're planning what you're going to do in that enclosure if it's to catch it or whatever. And you have a team uh to do it so working with the bigger crocodile is actually safer in that regard um because it's got to be planned and it's got to be taken very seriously whereas you work, work with the smaller ones you, know, you get a bit complacent every now and then and that's when accidents happen yeah all those times i've ever been bitten by a snake in the wild it's been by a really tiny snake when it's like a four foot razor that i'm trying to pick up i'm very cognizant of where the head is every single time so similar situation um, awesome. We've got time for a few more questions. A time flies and we're having fun with these crocodiles today. So let's go to King Carmen for uh, Miss uh, Neely's grade sevens, and then we'll take a couple from YouTube before we wrap up. So Miss Neely's glass, come on in, guys. Hey. Um, so how much pressure can a co crocodile tooth handle before breaking? Nice. I like that. Technical question. <laughs> How many, how many, how much pressure can the what, sorry? Yeah, so how much pressure can the tooth handle before it breaks? So like basically how powerful is the jaw of one of these crocodiles? Yeah, the, the, the jaws, okay, so the crocodiles, the larger they are, the stronger the jaws, of course. Uh, so a five meter uh, saltwater crocodile, for example, it's going to be a few tons per square inch is going to be the power in the jaws. That's, that's like one of those large, you know, uh, SUVs or people mover um uh, vans that they have these days dropping <laughs> dropping from about a meter it's very very powerful um it sounds scary the teeth and jaws of a crocodile are purely for grabbing and holding on to their prey they come out remember we said water's edge predator they come out of the water they're let down low they're half in half out of the water that's actually a disadvantage so to give them some advantage they've got the strongest bite so the teeth and jaws are just to secure uh, their prey and drag it into the water and not let go, simple as that. Um, and, and that's where the power is. So uh, once, and then they'll take it into the water, uh, drown it, and then they're in control and can feed as they, as they need. 
but um, yeah, that initial power is purely for securing their prey, dragging it into the water. So a couple of tons per square inch. And if they were to hit a bone, one of their teeth may shatter. They don't care. Crocodiles uh, and alligators replace their teeth throughout their lives. So next time you're sitting at the dentist's office, guess what? If you were a crocodile, you wouldn't have to be there. They don't need a dentist. They're way ahead of us on that one. Very, very neat. I like that different animals are like that. Like we get the two sets of teeth. Elephants get six. Crocodiles that place throughout their lives. Rodents are always growing. It's really neat to see the differences in the animal kingdom. And I, I love the idea of that epic bite force to grab down. One of my favorite facts when I was a kid was the fact that the opposite is not true. Like if you grab a crocodile's mouth and hold it shut, you can very easily keep it shut. It doesn't have the strength to lift. It has the strength to bite down. So I've seen things with like a rubber band around a pretty big crocodile where you can hold it in place. It's really cool. Oh. We, 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 do, we do use ropes or bands to uh, put them around the uh, jaws when we are moving them uh, or just, just you know, subduing them for, for a while, but we don't kid ourselves that that's safe um, and we don't for a second believe that we can hold those jaws closed with our hands. Uh, you may be able to temporarily hold those jaws closed with your hands, but you can't hold that head still. Even from a six-foot crocodile, it's too strong. It'll spin, it'll roll, it'll twist. You haven't got a got a hope. Plus the fact that the teeth project from the side of the mouth when the mouth is closed. So even if you are holding its mouth closed, if it moves, uh, you're you're going to slice your hands. So that's always a little deceptive when people uh, give you the impression that you can do a Tarzan and just hold the jaws closed sort of thing. Thank you for the, uh, listen, this is what half the fun of these programs are, are, are dispelling myths, so I appreciate that. From the we love to dispel myths. <laughs> um, we've got time for two more rapid fire questions. These are some great ones from our friends on YouTube. So Miss Hood's class is in Hatboro, Pennsylvania, grade five. And Dominic wants to know that big skull you showed us at the beginning, how old a crocodilian would that be? Uh, how big? That was a 5.2 meter saltwater crocodile. Um, I, what I did is I measured that skull, used a simple sort of calculation that gives you a rough uh, estimate of the total length. So uh, the scientists that are um, surveying crocodiles, if they just get a glance of the head, they get pretty good at estimating that length of the head, do a little calculation, and they can give a, get, a, get a rough idea as to the actual full length of the crocodile without having actually seen it. Yeah, and is that like a, so would that be an older crocodile? Could something get that big at a fairly young age? Like how old would something that big oh, be? That, that's, that's, that's probably at least 30, 35 years uh, of age. Um, with with all, all species of crocs live, you know, 50 plus years. Um, it's up to them whether they live into their 60s, 70s or 80s. It does happen for, for all species, but, um, uh, but certainly over 50 years old. And maturity has reached in the 30s um, so that a big crocodile like that would be at least you know mid 30s mid to late 30s i'd say um or, or a bit older maybe so yeah yeah nice uh actually that skull is in very very uh well but it's it's a replica but uh, yeah. <laughs> looking at that replica you can see that crocodile was in very good condition wasn't an old animal so um yeah i'd say sort of you know late 30s uh, oh. Early 40s or something at best. Excellent. Um, and then one more to wrap up. So I know our live classes might have a few more questions. Please do send them to me at the Exploring by the Senior Fans email. We'll try and get you answers as soon as possible. Uh, but we are nearing the end of the broadcast. So I wanted to pass along this question from Kira in Sudbury and Mr. Martin's class. He wanted to know how many eggs are in a crocodile nest. Uh, that's a really good question. So it depends. I said there's 26 different species and the, the number of eggs varies species to species but also depending on the age of the female so as she gets a bit older usually she'll lay a little bit uh, you know a higher number of eggs uh, so something like the dwarf caimans they'll, they'll usually lay 15 or 16 eggs thereabouts in the nest the american alligators a little bit more usually in the you know 20 25 uh, but again she's just a young female so as she gets older she may lay 30 35 even 40 eggs a nice mature uh gharial or tomistoma or saltwater crocodile nice mature female of those species could lay actually well into the 40s uh wow. number of eggs and occasionally we have, we have records of uh females laying over 50 eggs it's a that's exceptional but um yeah very cool <laughs> but, uh, 
quite a handful when you're collecting these things. Again, I really do encourage when you're done this broadcast, look up baby crocodiles, maybe a mother carrying its babies in its mouth, and it's amazing to see all these little tiny babies buying such a huge and, and amazing animal. Uh, Colin, this has been so much fun. Uh, we are at the end of our session, so before we wrap up and give the classes the chance to say a big goodbye, is there any last message that you want to, to take away? If they're going to take away one thing about crocodiles, about this broadcast, what should they leave with? Uh, I think it's just the, the fact that there's way more to crocodiles than what you've been led to believe, um, and understanding them, understanding their behaviour, uh, will hopefully engender a lot more respect for these animals. They, ha they have a good, solid place in uh, in their ecosystems. Um, they're insanely uh, clever, um, mm. but not in a not in a sneaky way. They're just very intelligent, um, amazing animals. Uh, so I, I guess hopefully. This little tidbit that I've been able to give you, uh, give you all a little glimpse into the world of the crocodiles. Um, hopefully, it piques a little bit of interest in you, and um, and you can go go ahead and investigate the crocodiles a little bit more. Um, I think you have my email address, or Jesse will be able to hand that out uh, to anyone that's interested. I'm always happy to respond to questions because I would rather know that you're getting answered. Uh, your questions are being answered uh, correctly and with the most up-to-date information rather than uh, the somewhat dodgy stuff that's lurking on the internet, maybe. Um, so, yeah, it was only a quick glimpse into the world of crocodiles, but there is, as I say, a lot more to these things than you've been led to believe. Fantastic. And I will certainly pass along the email to our live class today. So if you guys do have those extra questions, save them and you'll get those answered as soon as possible. I encourage everyone who's tuning in, check out crocodilesoftheworld.co.uk. You can learn more about the amazing facility there, all the work Colin and his team do to educate the world about crocodiles and help towards their conservation. Uh, a really amazing facility and such a pleasure uh, to have them in with us today. For Colin, what we do at the end of every broadcast is I'm going to bring in all our teachers to say a big thank you and farewell. So guys, get ready to be as excited as I am, Miss Foresight. Miss Coffin, Mr. Stelton, Mr. Elvis, Mr. 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 M